So our program is uh, here to support Aboriginal students. Um, we provide various services and supports to Aboriginal students on campus, First Nation, Métis, Inuit, and um, that's what we're called, Aboriginal Culture and Support Services. So our target audience is uh, Indigenous students, uh, all ages. We have the Native Access Program, so a lot of times we have high school students entering into those programs, so they can be as young as 17, 18, and then also mature students, sometimes uh, parents, even grandparents, uh, attending Lakehead University. The way we measure our success within any of the programs that we do um, is by the attendance at our events, um, but also what students tell us about the things that we do because we get feedback from students um, just dropping in and, you know, telling us how we're doing. Um, and what we, what we want to do with our programs is to create a sense of community on campus for our students. We get students from the far north, students from out of province, students from across, you know, northwestern Ontario, across Canada. So they come here, they may not necessarily know the campus or the city so we want to give them a space and a place here on campus that they can that will become their home away from home a place where they can be who they are and be comfortable and um, create a sense of community we provide support in three different areas so we have academic support so we do provide um, free tutoring to our students in whatever subject area they need help with um, we provide um, support through First Nation funders because I meet, meet with them on a regular, ongoing basis. So um, they know their students. We have their students. So we get together and talk about ways that we can support their students here on campus. Um, so whether it's through funding applications, um, having the funders on campus to meet with their students, providing them space to do that, all that happens here. Um, we do academic workshops. We have this year new uh, writing coach to work with our students, help them with their papers and things like that. We also provide transitional support um, through our Aboriginal student counselor. So that person works with students. Um, you know, if they have children, they need daycare, or if they're looking for housing because they're coming from the north and they haven't been able to find a place to stay yet. Um, working with students with those kinds of needs or also different referrals to service agencies in Thunder Bay or on campus. Um, and one of the big events that we host, um, we had our fifth annual event um, this September is the Medadize orientation. So that's a collaboration between us, uh, Confederation College, Oshki Pamachuin, the Wenjak Institute, uh, seven Generations, Northern Nishnabe Education Council, Abmatung First Nation, and Matawa Post Secondary. So we host and organize that event. And Medadize in Ojibwe means he or she starts a journey. So new students to Thunder Bay, um, we want to showcase. And it's that's where the idea came from for that event, was to showcase the good that our students are doing, the successes that they're having. Because too often in the news, it's always the negative, you know, the stereotypical negative imaging of us as a people. So in Thunder Bay especially, we wanted to showcase the success of our students. So we have this event. It's a post-secondary orientation at Marina Park. It's an outdoor event. Um, there's food. There's Aboriginal. We want to showcase Aboriginal talent. So there's always uh, musicians and keynote speakers. So that's a collaboration between all those organizations that I had mentioned to welcome students, not just to their respective institutions, but also to the city of Thunder Bay. So um, that's one of our larger events for the year. We also provide cultural support. So we have um, traditional feasts for seasonal feasts. We have an elder in residence program. We had a feast today, which was our fall feast, and we had one of our elders in, and she explained, you know, why we have feasts and food was shared, and it was really great. Um, but we also do um, sweat lodge ceremonies once a month at the sweat lodge site. So we have an elder come in and do those. And we do different workshops with, cultural activities, whether it's moccasin making, birch bark basket making, those types of things. 
from my perspective, uh, indigenous education is um, a number of things, but I'm going to try to sum it up because that's like a loaded question. Yes. <laughs> um, so first, for starters, it's holistic. So you're not just, you know, education doesn't just happen. Education doesn't just happen, you know, in your mind um, because we are four parts, body, mind, spirit, emotion. So education involves the whole person. Um, so that's the first thing I want to say. But also education, uh, it involves family because we all have a responsibility uh, with regard to educating our children. So parents especially have responsibility for the education of their children. Extended family, same thing. So it's a shared responsibility. Um, and then also, it's uh, Indigenous education is controlled by Indigenous people because it's for them. And it's not having to be um, accredited by external agencies. So in my opinion, I think that um, in Indigenous education is it's a place and a space where um, Aboriginal people are valued, number one, for who they are. And it's a place where they can be who they are by exercising their choice of language in all that they do. Um, and where they see themselves in every place and space within the learning environment, uh, including books, articles, uh, the curriculum. Um, so, and then having Indigenous professors, teachers, um, so that they see themselves reflected in everything that they're learning. So they feel like they have a sense of belonging and ownership of the things that they're seeing and learning and doing. Um, and it's a place governed by Indigenous people.